Issues, challenges and areas for cooperation between China, Japan and the Republic of Korea. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu. This is The Heat. Leaders from China, Japan and the Republic of Korea were supposed to meet this month in Tokyo as part of an annual trilateral summit between the neighboring nations. But with the recent impeachment of South Korean President Park Geun-hye and questions over her ability to attend, the meeting was postponed until 2017. However, all three countries share ongoing concerns over security issues like the DPRK's nuclear plans. Other areas for discussion include cooperation in areas like their economic links and trade, in a moment, we'll be joined by guests from China, Japan, and South Korea. But we begin with Xiao Lingfeng in Beijing. And Lingfeng, China, Japan, and uh, South Korea all share security concerns, such as the uh, DPRK's nuclear tests and also the possible deployment of the THAAD missile system in South Korea. How are these three countries dealing with these controversial issues? Well, and in China's chief negotiator on the DPRK's nuclear program, Wu Dawei, said earlier this month, that Beijing is willing to work with the international community to fully implement UN resolution on the issue, but opposes any unilateral sanctions outside that framework. China has suspended coal imports from the DPRK in line with UN sanctions introduced in late November. However, following this, Japan and South Korea decided to carry out their own round of unilateral sanctions, with some moderate penalties already in place. China has pressed for a resumption of six-party talks on the DPRK nuclear issue that's been stalled since 2009. China has consistently opposed the U.S. decision to deploy its THAAD anti-missile system in South Korea. In November, after Japan and South Korea signed an agreement to share defense intelligence, China criticized the move as creating instability on the Korean peninsula with a, quote, Cold War mentality. Chinese Daily Global Times said, Closer military cooperation between Tokyo and Seoul, along with a planned U.S. anti-missile system in South Korea, would severely damage China's geopolitical interests and the national security structure. And oh, now, these three countries also share other areas that are important, like their economic links and, of course, people-to-people uh, -people exchanges. What sort of cooperation and progress uh, is being made in these areas? Well, together, these three countries account for a fifth of the global economy. China is South Korea's biggest trading partner and the second largest to Japan. Turning that around, Japan and South Korea are the China's second and third largest trade partners respectively. So far, the three nations have conducted 10 rounds of negotiations over a trilateral free trade agreement. In a landmark deal, China and South Korea sealed a free trade pact just last year. A more ambitious free trade pact, or the RCEP, or Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, will include these three countries, along with ASEAN members Australia, New Zealand, and India. Within this proposal framework, China, Japan, and South Korea will account for three quarters of the bloc's total GDP. In people-to-people -people exchange, relaxed, relaxed visa policies allowed around 5 million Chinese to visit Japan last year. That number doubled compared to 2014, and over 6 million Chinese visited South Korea during the same period. And a recent report showed more than half of all international students in Japan and South Korea come from China. Anand. Thanks, Ling Feng. That's Xiao Ling Feng reporting from Beijing. And joining me now from Beijing is Yang Xiu. He is a senior fellow at the China Institute of International Studies. Also with us from Hong Kong is Yuichi Shimatsu. He is a journalist and former editor of the Japan Times. And here with me in Washington in the studio is Yon Ho Kim. He is a senior researcher with the U.S. Korea Institute at Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Welcome to all of you to the show. Young Xu, let me start with you. There have been concerns expressed uh, over the uh, nuclear program uh, of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. China, South Korea, and Japan are all opposed to the development and deployment of nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. Yep. We already have sanctions in place. Uh, but China also favors dialogue. So what do you see as the best way forward to resolve this issue? Well, I think we need to uh, conduct uh, two kinds of uh, tools or means. On one hand, we need to uh, push the necessary and the proper pressures on, the, on North Korea uh, to let them 
uh, take the uh, cons consequences for their uh, provide uh, 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 in irresponsible actions towards the nuclearization. But on the other hand, uh, we need to solve this issue in peaceful manner. So we need uh, negotiation, we need to talk. So all the sanctions, all the other diplomatic measures should uh, be helpful uh, to have a uh, door opening for the dialogues and the negotiations. So that is China's uh, way of thinking, say, on one hand, pressures, on the other hand, uh, uh, diplomatic efforts towards the negoci negotiation. So, Yuichi, here we have China, which uh, is part of the sanctions regime, but it also favors dialogue and cooperation in dealing with the DPRK. What is uh, Japan's solution to this problem? Well, there's been a lot of frustration in Japan, both in the government and in the public, because you have to understand Japan is right on the flight path of these ballistic missile launches, which fly over Japan, uh, pose a real threat if uh, there's an accident or something like that. Plus, the short-range missiles are shot into the Japan Sea, where we have a lot of fishing craft, other ships. So therefore, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, he proposed to the South Korean government to form a military alliance. Uh, the idea was to step up the pressure on Pyongyang to try to, you know, uh, speed up the peace talks here. But what happened is that, um, you know, the protests and the impeachment of President Park makes it very unlikely that this alliance is going to go through. So Japan is back to square one. No military alliance, no way to put pressure on Pyongyang. So we're back to where we were. But is that uh, really an option, Yuichi, a military alliance between Japan and South Korea? Wouldn't be that be seen by the DPRK as a provocation, not just the DPRK, but possibly by China and by Russia as well? Well, absolutely. I think all the neighbors would look at it that way. But the idea was that was how to get some action. If there was some alarm on the other side of the Japan Sea, maybe this will get people back more seriously to the table to try to make more progress. So I don't think it was a real alliance in the sense of leading to a war, but more of a pressure tactic. Yun Ho Kim, as Yuichi pointed out, South Korea could be facing new elections. Uh, the president, President Park Hae-hyun, has been uh, impeached. Uh, one of the frontrunners to succeed her, Moon Jae-in, said, uh, and I'm quoting, he says that he's willing to have a summit with the DPRK, have direct talks with them. Uh, should the two Koreas be more engaged, do you think? Well, I think it has become a conventional wisdom uh, in the policy circles, uh, both in Washington and Seoul, that uh, President Obama's uh, so-called strategic patience in dealing with North Korea is a failed approach. So uh, it is time to review all the new options that has, uh, have not been aggressively pursued. And I think um, another North-South summit is uh, uh, one uh, option that uh, worth uh, you know looking at. Um, indeed, uh, after President Park shut down the Kaesong Industrial Park uh, in the wake of the fourth nuclear test by North uh, by the North uh, earlier this year, uh, South Korea has been left no meaningful communication channel with the North, and uh, uh, opposition parties uh, have been criticized uh, the Park government for. Uh, letting the fate of the two nations, two, two Koreas, at the hands of the uh, uh, neighboring powers. So, um, and, uh, so this kind of uh, having another uh, summit meeting is uh, one of the options that would be very uh, uh, attractive to uh, seemingly the uh, next progressive government. But I think we still don't know what price the South Korean government, next government, uh, would have to pay uh, if they're willing to have uh, another summit. Because Kim Jong-un uh, would demand um, not only uh, reopening the Kaesong Industrial Park, but also resuming Mount Kumgang mm -hmm. tourism, right. uh, which uh, doesn't sound uh, feasible under the current uh, UN Security Council resolution. Right. What about the deployment of THAAD? That's the U.S. anti-missile system which the U.S. wants to deploy in South Korea. Now you have this political uncertainty, the president uh, being impeached, new elections possibly. Uh, what's the future of that? 
Well, I think one big variable uh, is uh, the final decision to be made by the constitutional court. Right. If the court uphold the impeachment, uh, it is very likely we're going to have a opposition candidate to be ele elected at the uh, upcoming presidential election. Um, and uh, both uh, the main opposition, the Minju Party and the centrist uh, People's Party, have been uh, aggressively opposed to the idea of uh, deploying that. The right. Minju Party argued for a special National Assembly Committee to investigate uh, the uh, issue, and the People's Party even uh, supported the idea of having uh, National Assembly approval before we move forward. So if we have a, a right. progressive government uh, next time, yeah. then it is uh, very obvious that uh, the Thad deployment issue will be under uh, a tough political scrutiny. Uh, Yang Xiu, what is China's position on Thad? China's been very critical. What are the major concerns that China has over the deployment of this system? China-U.S. relation, China-South Korean relation in a very complicated uh, uh, shape uh, that damaged the cooperation among the countries f towards the deep denuclearization. But furthermore, the more important thing for China's concern is the side deployment uh, as an anti-missile system will break the regional strategic stability, and the uh, U.S. will make use of the anti-system in Korea, in Japan, to set up an anti-missile war against China and Russia. That is Russia's similar concerns. And uh, the, as a result, the strategic balance between China and the U.S., Russia and the U.S., uh, will be imbalanced. Uh, so that will trigger a series of uh, regional instabilities. So that is China's uh, basic uh, reason uh, for the opposition, especially under the current uh, sophisticated uh, situation triggered by North Korean nuclear weapons. Right. Sad issue make the situation uh, nowhere towards uh, what we want. Yuichi, another major contentious issue we have in the region are differences in the South China Sea. Uh, what are the challenges that Beijing, Tokyo, and Seoul face in uh, coming to some kind of a deal on this issue? Well, there's uh, several layers of difficulty. I think there's the uh, UN Law of the Sea panel's decision, which was pretty much unilaterally in favor of the Philippines. And by the way, the head of the panel at the time, or of the uh, Law of Sea uh, or, uh, sub organization of the UN, was a, Jap a veteran Japanese diplomat who's sort of a revisionist on the Constitution. So that hasn't really helped. We've got some imbalance in the law there. Uh, the other problem is uh, a steady arms buildup. I think by all sides, not only Japan, China, uh, but all, and, and the Philippines, Japan helping the Philippines, but also by Vietnam. So we do see this uh, increasing cluster of weapons and standoff there. Although I think all sides have been, as, as we get closer and closer to the possibility of a confrontation, all sides are becoming more and more cautious. So I, and, and there has been development toward consultation and that the uh, commanders of ships are in touch with each other to try to avert problems. But the situation's not going away, and there's not a real clear path now to either a bilateral or a multilateral set of discussions to develop some protocols to prevent an outbreak of hostilities or a skirmish there. Yangshu, what are some of the ways that China would like to see this dispute resolved? What are the options open here? Uh, I think uh, China's position, basic consideration is the disputes. Now the disputes uh, can be divided into two categories. One category uh, disputes uh, is, is the different positions between China and the other claimants, like uh, the Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, and Brunei. And uh, regarding to solve these differences, there should be direct negotiations among claimants. And the second category of difference lies in China and the United States, focusing on the freedom of passages. So I think uh, China and the U.S. share the same um, common interests about freedom of uh, uh, passages. But uh, there are some uh, operational di differences. Regarding to this kind of differences, China and the U.S. should have uh, negotiations. So in short, 
negotiations to address two kinds of differences among different parties. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, U.S. now insist on uh, uh, their military actions in this controversial area. So that makes things more complicated, uh, farther from the solution.